All right. Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us. Welcome to our 2016 World Kidney Day Hangout. My name is Matt Ryman. I am a registered dietitian, and I work with dialysis patients at DaVita Kidney Care in Michigan. Um, I am very excited to be moderating this discussion. Today's hangout is special. It is World Kidney Day. Um, kidney disease is the ninth leading cause of death in the United States and affects millions worldwide. Um, we'll discuss today's World Kidney Day theme, kidney disease in children, and we'll share resources and tools to help you learn your risk for kidney disease. Now let's meet our panelists. Um, first we have Deborah Flickinger, who is a care partner for a dialysis patient. Deborah, would you mind telling us where you're uh, joining us from? Actually, we're a few miles south of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. All right. I was, I was born in Pennsylvania. Welcome. We're glad to have you. And um, we're, we also have Dr. Craig Langman. He is a DaVita Kidney Care Medical Director uh, one of our, at one of our pediatric centers. Uh, Mr. Langman, where are you tuning in from? Hi, hi Matt and Deborah. I'm uh, actually a Pennsylvanian, too, by birth. And uh, I'm in my home office in uh, Chicago. Um, and uh, happy to join today on World Kidney Day for Kids. All right. Well, thank you both for joining us. Uh, let's get started on our topics. Uh, to our viewers, if you have any questions or if there's anything you'd like to share about how you raise awareness for kidney disease, please type those in the submit question box in the bottom right corner of the video during our discussion, and we'll take as many questions as we have time for today. Um, let's address the theme, kidney disease in children. Dr. Langman, how is kidney disease different in children compared to adults? Sure. So uh, I think most people know that kidney disease uh, is arbitrarily divided into five stages, where um, when you have uh, CKD or chronic kidney disease one, you uh, have the potential to have uh, some problem with your kidneys long term and as you lose filtering function it goes down to CKD5 at which point you need dialysis or a kidney transplant. Uh, now in adults there's a standard equation that is used so to help your physician gauge your level of CKD 1 through 5. We need separate equations in kids mm -hmm. and uh, they've been published uh, and they allow your uh, physician for your uh, child with kidney disease to get the right CKD stage because the adult equations uh, really don't apply to kids who are different uh, body size and body surface area. Right. So what are the most common causes of kidney disease in children? Well, unlike adults where diabetes and hypertension uh, predominate, in pediatric uh, patients, the most common cause leading eventually to CKD5 are things that are, uh, kids are born with where the kidney is not put together properly in one of many different ways uh, uh, while the baby is being formed in utero. And so we call those uh, congenital uh, uh, urologic abnormalities. The kidney structure is just not put together properly. And then as kids get older and into adolescence, uh, they often develop uh, some of the same diseases that adults do who have other forms of glomerular disease, but predominantly uh, most of the time, it's the fact that the kidney wasn't put together properly. Mm. So are there things that children with uh, kidney disease need that maybe are, are needed with adults? Absolutely. You know, th there's multiple things. One is that the job of uh, normal kids is to grow up and socialize normally and grow to their genetic potential, uh, healthy kids. Well, we want the same for kids with chronic kidney disease. So. Uh, we have uh, available many agents that would help promote that. So chronic kidney disease is associated with often not optimal uh, growth, linear growth. Mm -hmm. And happily, the FDA has approved uh, various forms of growth hormone so that we can administer that to kids in the right situation and get them to grow to their genetic potential. Additionally, and importantly, kids go to school and socialize and, and get education. Well, we want that for our kids too. And we think most if not all pediatric patients should have that possibility in their program of getting as much schooling as possible and, and graduating uh, into uh, college. So Dr. Langman, how do you talk to children about their kidney disease? It's a great question. Every single child uh, is a little different, but kids go through developmental stages uh, that parents know full well. 
And uh, uh, we try to tailor what we talk about based on those developmental stages for kids. Now, the most important thing we think is to have a team where the parents and the uh, physician taking care of the child with chronic kidney disease really work together to help explain things uh, to the child undergoing treatment for chronic kidney disease. Uh, so there's no one right answer, but uh, we work with the parents to say, how best can we explain to your child, for example, why they need so many blood tests and what that means. And while it's never fun to have blood tests, we try to make that experience into something that's more positive than not by using uh, the parents as well. Of course. So what are your goals for treating children with chronic kidney disease, Dr. Langman? Yeah, again, as a, first we're pediatricians uh, before we're pediatric kidney doctors. And as pediatricians, we want kids to grow and develop as normally as possible. We want them to have normal, pure relationships as much as possible. And while, yes, they need lots of attention for their chronic kidney disease, we really try as best we can to not have that be the only focus in their lives. We want their siblings uh, to, uh, if they have them, to be part of the experience so that we, we try to uh, view the family as our entire patient and mm -hmm. have kids develop and grow as normally as possible, receive education, and make it into the adult world uh, with a good start on uh, achieving success. All right. Well, uh, let's shift gears for a minute and let's hear from Deborah about her kidney disease story. Uh, Deborah, you're a care partner for dialysis patients. After your family member's diagnosis, what steps did you take to learn about kidney disease and treatment options? Well, actually, we did not have uh, very good information from our um, urologist or our kidney doctor, and um, we went online and just looked at different sites. But the DaVita site was by far the most informative site. We did also go to the Smart Kidney or Kidney Smart classes mm -hmm. and uh, talk with the dietitian and uh, just really try to keep ourselves informed, um, know our numbers, uh, our numbers from our blood work and where we need to work to keep those under control. Great. So what advice do you have for families going through a similar experience? Well, first of all, don't be overwhelmed. You can live with kidney disease. Um, get to know, uh, like I said, your blood work, the things that you need to control. My husband has to uh, really control his potassium intake because he runs a high potassium. Um, know which foods uh, contain a lot of potassium. Um, when you go to restaurants, um, a lot of times or most of the time, even the big chain restaurants will be willing to work with you and let you know which dishes um, have high sodium in them and stuff. Uh, make sure that you read the labels. Uh, just because something is marked low sodium on the label um, front of the can of vegetables doesn't mean that it is low enough sodium for you. Um, also, get a scale. Make sure that you weigh proper portions um, mm -hmm. so that you're not overestimating how much you're taking. Um, also, leave a little extra time to cook. Um, try to make the same thing for your loved one that everyone else is eating, maybe at a family function, but just make it his way. Maybe you have to boil the potatoes twice because you have to take out the potassium. So leave a little extra time so that he doesn't feel that you're going through too much trouble for him. Um, and also, if you watch every day and you tend to function and there's just nothing else to eat except things that you know you really shouldn't have, try to eat them in small portions. Don't worry about it. Enjoy yourself. And just buckle down the next day and get back on your plan. Great. That is great advice, Deborah. Um, as a care partner, what are some ways that you offer support to your loved one with kidney disease? Well, I try to um, tell him that it's a partnership, that I will help him as much as I can, but that he needs to know his parameters. He needs to know what foods he can and cannot have. I can't be with him when he's eating lunch uh, mm -hmm. on a work day. Um, I can't be with him if he's having a dinner meeting. So he needs to know his own diet. Um, also, make sure that, and sometimes it comes down to nagging a little bit, have you weighed yourself every day? Are you taking your blood pressure every day? How's your blood pressure running? Um, those kind of things. So you have to nag a little bit until it becomes a habit with your loved one. Hmm. Well, Deborah, your loved one sounds very fortunate to have you um, as their support. Um, 
So, Dr. Langman, Deborah, uh, before we move on to questions, do you have any other thoughts uh, you'd like to add? Um, just one. Uh, if you have a, your kidney doctor and you don't feel that they, they have enough information there in the office, in other words, they're not, our kidney doctor did not even have a, a mention of the DeVita um, area or the DeVita place in Washington, Pennsylvania, where we live. Um, I would you know, ask if they can supply more educational literature um, and have it in the office references and stuff so that you don't feel like you're stranded. Well, Dr. Langman, any thoughts you'd like to add? or? Well, I, I'd support that you, you want as much information as you can get. And I think in addition to uh, DeVita, which is a wonderful source uh, for uh, patients, uh, the National Kidney Foundation and our National Institutes of Health also have websites which provide excellent information for uh, kids and adults with chronic kidney disease. And uh, I would encourage those three areas, DeVita, the National Kidney Foundation, and the National Institutes of Health as excellent resources for both uh, patients and their uh, partners and parents, if they're kids, uh, to learn about uh, kidney disease. Great. All right. Well, we have about 15 minutes left. We will uh, field questions from our audience. Our first question is for you, Dr. Langman, and it says, if my child doesn't have kidney disease, are there healthy lifestyle choices to help prevent kidney disease? You know, that's an excellent question, and, and thank whoever asked that. There really are some wonderful things that we can do to try to prevent kidney disease. So one of those, and I think uh, Deborah talked about it, is really to eat healthy. Uh, so what does that mean? That means to uh, really eat uh, modest amounts of salt on a regular basis, um, to eat modest amounts of protein. You don't need to protein gorge. The, the American diet happily has so much extra protein for kids to grow normally. Um, and we especially want to watch out for the development of obesity, which has so many negative consequences. Uh, so if Unfortunately, obesity, which is on the rise, uh, starts to appear. Speak with your physician about uh, healthy diets that one can choose to try to maintain uh, good weight. Uh, read labels, as, as Deborah said, uh, for uh, she and her husband. Uh, there's so much uh, hidden phosphate, which is probably a, a big deal these days, in food that is highly preserved. So we try to encourage people to eat as much fresh food as possible. Uh, and lastly, Exercise, exercise, exercise. Uh, this is World Kidney Day. Move those feet. Uh, regular exercise keeps your blood pressure lower, keeps your heart in good shape, and will prevent uh, as much as possible the development of obesity. Easy things to do on a regular basis to try to uh, stay kidney healthy. Great. Great advice, Dr. Lyman. Thank you. Our next question is for Deborah. It says, I am a caregiver for my mother, and she is new to dialysis. I need education and meal training. Where can this in, where can this individual find some resources online or in person? Well, I would say check in your area to see if there is a Davida organization um, place. Um, they do have the Smart Kidney or Kidney Smart. I can never remember which one comes first, um, but they do uh, provide you uh, with um, a dietitian that is available for you. Also, ask your um, hospital. Call your hospital and ask if their dietitian there has any classes. They have um, diabetic education there, but ask if you can talk to the dietitian about um, your kidney or low sodium or whatever kind of diet that you need to be on. Also, for meals, um, there are sites um, if you go to um, on the web that provide you with ready cooked TV dinners per se. Uh, that uh, have all the nutrients listed. They they are for kidney patients that are on dialysis. They are for just a kidney patient that's on low sodium or low potassium. You get the printout of each meal and you can select from meals. They're not cheap. It's not like four dollars a meal. It runs about eight or eight to twelve dollars a meal, but it's well worth it because if you're tired and you can't cook, it saves your loved one from having to go to something that's not right for them. Deborah, that is great to hear. Um, I'm, going to put a, Matt, I'm just going to put a plug in for the, I know you're a dietitian, and, and I just want to put a plug in for the DaVita dietitians that we work with for years. We, we see so many uh, multi-ethnic uh, uh, members of our society with chronic kidney disease, 
And the beauty that I find is that DeVita has uh, ethnic appropriate diets for almost every ethnicity I know for people with chronic kidney disease and on dialysis. So it's really amazing what you can do to let people still eat the food they love, but yet do it in a healthy way. I wanted to mention also, Dr. Langman, that the, the Vita site offers free cookbooks mm -hmm. um, That's great. for diabetes or uh, for kidney. So um, I, would take, I would suggest that you take a look at that website. Great. And uh, I appreciate the, the positive message, Dr. Langman. I, I know when I see my patients, my goal is to um, help them enjoy all the freedom and normalcy that they can while still feeling the best and being healthy. Um, so there are a couple questions directed at me. Uh, the first is whether potassium citrate or potassium sorbate are harmful ingredients to eat if someone is on dialysis in the sense of whether or not they will raise their potassium levels. Um, so my practice has been with adults, not with pediatrics. Uh, speaking from experience, I find potassium additives tend to not um, make a meaningful influence on the patient on the potassium levels of the pata patients I see. Um, it tends to come more from things like missing treatment, shortening treatment, uh, potatoes, dairy foods, beans, nuts, and chocolate. Um, to my chocolate lovers, I have compassion on you. Um, Dr. Langman probably would not want to know how much chocolate I eat on a daily basis. <laughs> um, truly, it's 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 probably my sticking point. So that's my experience. Um, I would definitely sit down and um, talk to your your healthcare providers, um, doctors and dietitians about how you should eat. Um, the Davida website truly does have a wealth of information about diet. Uh, quite frankly, the, the abundance of information on the DeVita website is one of the things that prompted me to apply to work for DeVita, um, mm -hmm. and, and that is a true thing. I think it's exceptional. Uh, the next question is also for me. Sorry to hog the airtime. <laughs> uh, how can I identify foods that are high in potassium and phosphorus? So we talked about potassium. There are lists online, and your healthcare providers can provide those, but generally you're looking at dairy foods, um, anything tomato-based, anything potato-based, anything orange-based, and bananas. And you can also get things like uh, mangoes and exotic fruits. Um, those tend to be what does it, but uh, more information available online and from your healthcare providers. Phosphorus tends to also be dairy. Beans, nuts, chocolate, um, processed meats. Um, the, the more distant a food item is from its original source, the more likely they have added preservatives like phosphorus. Also, beverages that come in a powder form tend to have a lot of phosphorus. Um, so one of the best things you can do is read labels. Uh, I find that my adult patients who struggle with phosphorus um, tend to be younger and have more processed diets. My older patients who eat natural foods tend to do better and need fewer binders as a general rule. So it's like a word search. You just need to look for four letters, P-H-O-S, FOS whether it's phosphate, sodium phosphate, hexametaphosphate, you don't need the chemical degree, just identify those four letters and find a brand or flavor that is an alternative. And I promise you, for every item I have seen with added phosphorus, there's an equivalent that doesn't. They're out there. Um, next question, well, I'm getting close to the mantra, I'm sorry. How does one stay active with kidney disease? What are the best exercises? Um, maybe Dr. Langman will go to you first, and Deborah, and then I'll I'll round that one off if I have anything to add. Sure, I think uh, that's a it's a great question. Um, good aerobic exercise uh, really has been shown to benefit, for example, patients on dialysis, mm -hmm. including kids, where if they uh, use a bicycle uh, and and ride a bicycle three to four times a week, it makes them have uh, better uh, dialysis efficiency. Uh, it, it helps actually uh, use their protein that they're eating in a better way to build muscle and not fat. So uh, good aerobic exercise. And again, I've discussed all of this with your individual uh, physician tailored for you. But in general, uh, if you're capable, good aerobic exercise, riding bicycles for kids is just an easy thing, very natural for them to do. Great. Deborah, other thoughts? Um, I would say that rather than become a couch potato, put that exercise bike where you watch your TV programs mm -hmm. um, and use it when you watch your favorite program or whatever. The time goes by so much quicker. And um, if you don't have any exercise equipment in the home, find some place where you can work out or just walk around your neighborhood. 
uh, they, so many times now they have those fit bands that you can wear so it can let you know how many calories you're burning, how long the distance is that you've traveled. Um, so just make it a part of your day, make it an appointment. Uh, you don't miss your doctor's appointment, so this is for your health also. Great advice, Deborah. I love it. Um, all right, so no more audience questions, but we do have a closing question. Uh, how are you raising awareness or uh, ideas or tips for raising awareness for kidney disease in your community? Well, I'll go first. Um, at the uh, website for uh, the hospital that I uh, work at, Lurie Children's Hospital of Chicago, uh, there's a uh, blog called Salubrity. I'll put a little plug in. And in combination with the hospital, uh, my faculty and I put together a very comprehensive uh, blog about kids with kidney disease. So if you're interested in uh, some other things that we haven't had a chance to talk about today, that'd be a great place. The other is at the National Kidney Foundation of Illinois, a chapter of the National Kidney Foundation overall, uh, has a unique uh, mobile van that goes to communities around the state of Illinois. It's, it's, it's state-based, so it's all in Illinois. And over the course of a year, we provide 50, at least 52 screenings where we have people come in who might not otherwise know they have any aspects of chronic kidney disease. We do screening blood pressures and urinalysis and a blood sugar for adults, uh, looking at the most common causes. And we find an astonishingly high, somewhere around 75% of people who show up without knowing they have chronic kidney disease, we find evidence of it. And then we provide uh, care, uh, we care places for them to go to follow up on the fact that they may have chronic kidney disease. So uh, this is something we do uh, around the uh, year, but especially today on World Kidney Day, uh, we're doing a screening uh, in the Chicagoland area. So uh, again, um, the idea is that talk to your physician uh, and ask he or she if you might be somebody who has chronic kidney disease, whether you're a kid or an adult. Great. Deborah. any thoughts you'd uh, like to add? Well, I would definitely recommend that everyone uh, have a yearly checkup with blood work. Um, there are so many people walking around that are in stage 3, stage 2 kidney failure and they don't even know it. They may not be experiencing any symptoms or they may be um, dismissing their symptoms. Um, I also I would say that um, I have recommended the VEDA, um, the website and the uh, classes to uh, family members um, that are having problems and also um, I would say just um, when you go to your doctor's office uh, for your kidney um, problems, you know, promote them uh, having um, information on hand. If they have a bulletin board, you know, if you've printed something out from a site, ask them if you can post it or ask them if you can post um, references to the National Kidney Foundation. If you get a pamphlet from them in the mail, ask if you can put it on their bulletin board. Great advice. Um, You're right, Deborah. One in three people in the United States have chronic kidney disease, so uh, make sure that you absolutely see your physician at least once a year. Eat healthy, exercise as much as possible. Great. All right. Um, so there are tips for parents of children with CKD on the DeVita website. Also, tips for uh, your teenager in CKD. Um, I'd also direct you to the davita.com slash knowyourrisk link. Again, that's davita.com slash knowyourrisk. Um, I see wonderful people every day that um, had they seen their physician sooner and investigated their risk sooner, despite how scary that can be, um, could have improved their quality of life. So um, I would encourage you to do that. Um, also, there are online forums on the DeVita website where you can connect with other patients and caregivers um, for emotional support. Um, so Dr. Langman and Deborah, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for all the care you provide your patients and loved ones. You are uh, exceptional people. Um, until next time, please continue uh, raising awareness for kidney disease, whether it's sharing your story or encouraging your loved ones to take, uh, take our Know Your Risk quiz um, or learning about your options as a kidney patient. Thank you so much, everyone. Have a beautiful day. Goodbye. Thank you. Oh, thank you.